live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. First tonight, a manhunt is underway for the suspect in a violent stabbing in Ravenswood that has left a man dead and a woman in a critical condition. Neighbours left in shock along with two teenagers who witnessed the horrific crime. Prosser's Forest Road, neighbouring a primary school surrounded by bushland, and today it became a murder scene. Come out at 4.30 this morning and seen all the cop lights and amber lights and everything. This house, the site of a stabbing that left one man dead and a woman in a critical condition. Like screaming or yelling, I heard nothing like that, so I'm surprised that this has happened, you know. She was rushed to the Launceston General Hospital with stab wounds. Our thoughts are with the loved ones at this stage. Her two teenage children witnessed the frenzied attack and were the first to call triple zero, both mentally scarred but physically unharmed. It's caused significant uh, distress to them uh, and it is a shocking incident. The man police are trying to track down is 44-year-old Kerry Whiting, who fled the scene. Despite a large-scale land and air search, he has so far evaded authorities. While it is not believed that Kerry is a threat to the community, anyone who sees him, we ask that they do not approach him and to immediately contact police. Authorities were tight-lipped about a potential motive, but did reveal Mr Whiting knew both his victims. The weapon has also not been located. Detectives combed through the scrub and went door-to-door, -door canvassing nearby residents for any information. It was so unusual that I heard nothing. This man, among other neighbours, unaware of the violence and tragedy that this morning played out only a few doors away. We're joined live now by our reporter Garth Burley outside the Launceston General Hospital. Now, Garth, what is the condition of the injured woman tonight? Kim, we've just had an update from police in the last hour or so. And what I can tell you is that woman remains in a critical condition at the LGH. She underwent surgery this afternoon and is yet to be formally interviewed by police. As for her suspected attacker, Kerry Whiting, he has now been at large for close to 14 hours. Police believe he's still in the Launceston area and they're throwing all its resources at this manhunt and all the manpower as well. We saw today helicopters and drones circling the northern suburbs and bushland. Now, as I briefly mentioned earlier, that bushland neighbours the Ravenswood Primary School. Police did reveal today that there is a possibility the school could be locked down if needed. They hope it doesn't come to that. They're appealing to the public for the whereabouts, any information, any leads about this 44-year-old. Police uh, said today, Kim, that they hope this comes to a safe resolution. Indeed. Thanks very much there, Garth Burley. Well, a 29-year-old man has been charged after drugs and firearms were found following the search of a storage facility at Moonee yesterday. Detectives attended the scene where quantities of ice and ecstasy were seized, as well as a significant amount of cash. He's been remanded and will appear in the Hobart Magistrates Court tomorrow morning. In a separate incident, a 30-year-old man has been charged with child exploitation offences. Police seized 19 electronic devices during the search of a Hobart property today. The joint investigation comes as part of Operation Arkstone, which uncovered an online network of alleged offenders sharing abuse. It is a major step towards reconciliation. The Tasmanian Aboriginal community has welcomed a new report outlining a pathway to truth-telling and treaty. The Premier says he's committed to reconciliation but has so far stopped short of confirming whether he will implement the report's recommendations. What do we want? Treaty! The Tasmanian Aboriginal people could today be one step closer to achieving that. Today the Parliament has acknowledged our sovereignty and our rights to our land. An historic report tabled in Parliament by the Premier. One matter though that lingers, that is not resolved, is our relationship with our First Nations people, the Tasmanian Aboriginal people. The pathway to truth-telling and treaty. Its authors holding more than 100 meetings over four months, an emotional process. And the reason why tears were shed is because we experienced the incredible privilege of people opening up their hearts to us. One of the key recommendations is the establishment of a truth-telling commission. They'll be looking at the effects of colonisation and dispossession on the Aboriginal community and really 
getting the broader Tasmanian community to understand the impact. Also recommending a Tasmanian treaty process. The Premier asked whether that's something he could commit to. I'm not going to get into that. Um, I am uh, looking for a pathway to true reconciliation. I have a range of recommendations in front of me. The report makes 24 recommendations in total, but the Premier is yet to commit to implementing any of them. He says he will now consider the report and respond to the recommendations in full when Parliament resumes next year. We waited 200 years, uh, so we're a very patient people. But the message from this Palawa woman is... I know we're hearing a lot of words and I believe it's time that we see some action. Meg Sides, 7 Tasmania News. Federal Group's monopoly on poker machine licences will officially end in 2023. The state government's contentious future gaming market bill has now passed through both houses of parliament. The Greens describing it as one of Tasmanian parliament's darkest days. Meanwhile, in the Upper House, TAFE reforms have now passed despite strong opposition from the Labor Party, labelling the reforms an attack on the public sector. Tasmania's peak tourism body is calling on the federal government to bring back free car fares on the spirit of Tasmania next year. The Tourism Industry Council of Tasmania says the move would attract more visitors to the state and help local businesses. We know the people who come by sea stay longer, they spend more and they get into regional parts of the state. So if we're looking for a way of kick-starting our visitor economy, getting it into the towns and communities that most need it, the Free Car Fares initiative is a really direct way of stimulating that market. The Bring Your Car for Free campaign has been credited for kick-starting tourism to Tasmania when it ran during the first half of the year. Tassie Tigers coach Ali De Winter has publicly thrown his support behind former Australian Test captain Tim Payne. Despite the controversy swirling around the wicketkeeper, De Winter believes he is in the right form to contest the Ashes after another day out on the field. Nearly a week on from sensationally resigning as Test cricket captain, Tim Payne remains tight-lipped about his current state of mind. Looking forward to tomorrow's match. The right-hander was hunting for redemption today when he stepped up to the crease on the final day of Tasmania's second 11 game against South Australia. But it was all over relatively quickly after being caught out in the field with pain dismissed for seven. Tassie Tigers coach Ali De Winter has come out in support of the wicketkeeper, taking a clear stance on Payne's future today. There's no question that he's, he's in our best team um, at the moment um, and he's also the best wicketkeeper in the country, so we're really happy to have him back in our team. It comes after what's been a turbulent week for Cricket Tasmania, with the group now switching its focus to the future. I think it's a learning opportunity for all of us, really, on, you know, the standards we want to keep, both as an organisation and, and in your personal life. Payne has been named in the Tigers' Marsh Cup squad and will now go on to play in the one-day clash against Western Australia tomorrow here at Blunston Arena in a bid to prove his Ashes fitness. He needed to play this week um, from a physical and a cricket point of view um, and we want him to play tomorrow. This will be the former Test captain's fifth consecutive day of cricket in his return from neck surgery. He'll obviously take the gloves in this game for us and he'll bat probably at number three. And De Winter is ruling out any concerns around whether Payne could handle sledging from the Barmy Army if he is selected for the Ashes side. I think so. He's got pretty thick skin, Payne. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmanian News. Federal Labor is promising to connect one and a half million homes and businesses across Australia to fibre to the premises NBN, including 15,000 across the Lions electorate as part of a recent election commitment. These days people want things done now, they want them done fast, they've got somewhere to go, they need to be somewhere else, so you need fast internet access. Labor's plan will make available optic fibre into streets where there's a, a, a node uh, and then premises, uh, homeowners, business owners can choose to upgrade to fibre to the premises if they choose to. The federal government says it is delivering NBN on schedule and on budget. Tasmanian students have taken out a national competition promoting jobs in the dairy industry. The group from St Brendan Shaw College looked after cows for a fortnight to create a catchy commercial which caught the eye of judges. 
Meet the modern day cowgirls, these ag science students milking the opportunity to learn about jobs in the dairy industry. Veterinarians, they check the health and well-being of the dairy cows and diagnose and treat them when needed. For the first time, St Brendan Shaw has taken out the national prize in the Cows Create Careers competition, beating more than 200 schools. So we had a full whiteboard of ideas, um, kept swapping and changing them. We all kind of put in contribution and yeah, and it took definitely a lot of takes as far as the video process. The judges declaring their entry dairy good, awarding them the top prize of $1,000. And some students believe that unless they're off, off a farm, they don't get to be part of that. And I think a program like this really opens their eyes to all the different jobs and future career options out there. The Cows Creates Careers program not only highlights dairy farming, but other jobs as well, such as being a vet, nutritionist or agronomist. And the program is working, inspiring a new generation. Being a vet, that sounds fun to do. I like animals and caring for them and helping them if they're sick or injured or anything like that. The students now tasked with how to spend the money with an upgrade to the college's veggie garden, one possibility. Elizabeth O'Neill, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian artist Isabel Schwiner has won the coveted Henry Jones Art Prize with judges impressed by her oil on linen painting by the river. The nature of why is she there, where is she from, what time is it, what world are we in and I think they found that really intriguing and um, evoking quite a sense of a mystery. The artist beat a record 238 entries at an awards ceremony last night and says well, she's humbled. Well that was very very surprising because I had no idea and um, I was at the very back of the room and I had to cross the whole room and it was very embarrassing. <laughs> The award recognises work from early career artists over 18 years of age. Meanwhile, street artists are transforming bare walls in Clarence this week. It's all part of the new East Mode Festival, which will see a number of murals created in the Bayfield Street laneway. The festivities will culminate this Sunday with a celebration of live local music, reloved market stalls, food trucks and a mobile gallery space. The Mayor says it's great to be supporting the local art industry in the process. It's really important to support local art, particularly during the last couple of years of COVID, uh, the art industry has taken a hit. But more importantly, they've got so much to offer in terms of lifting the place, make it more exciting. Members of the community will even get to tap into their creative side with a public spray wall also taking stage at the free event. Charities are asking Tasmanians to dig deep and give back to people in need this festive season, but it's not just gifts that are in high demand. One organisation is putting the call out for volunteers to deliver food to ensure vulnerable people don't go hungry on Christmas Day. The holidays are a time for Tasmanians to enjoy, but for families experiencing hardship, it can cause an extra financial burden. While most of us get very excited at the thought of going and buying our family and friends presents, um, if you know that you can't even afford your bill or to put fuel in your car, the thought of having to spend hundreds of dollars is really daunting. The Salvation Army is hoping to assist 3,000 families this Christmas. Um, so that's with food support, that's with gifts um, and that's also with making sure that they might come along to a community meal or a carol event and they've got that connection as well. The Smith family is asking the community to give the gift of education. Austin's Ferry students today taking part in one of their programs. If you don't know reading and you don't grow, and you grow up, it's going to be really hard to get a job. It's a time that we can be planning for the next year and thinking about what our needs are around some of the programs we run like our learning clubs or iTrack which is a peer mentoring program or student to student which is a peer reading program. Colony 47's annual Christmas lunch will be back in full swing after COVID stalled last year's event. Last year we did a modified event where we delivered uh, lunches out to about three or four hundred people. But this year we're back at the Hellenic Hall. We'll be providing around 280 to 300 people with meals there. Of course, the important work of charities can't be done without the help of volunteers. And Vinnie's is putting the call out for extra helpers to deliver food hampers this year. Every year we um, give out around about 112 
um, Christmas food hampers. If we don't have volunteers to help us, we can't really reach out to those people in need across the state. A reminder that giving back is the most important gift this Christmas. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmanian News. The jack jumpers have been thrashed by the Perth Wildcats in Olverson overnight. Josh Adams was easily the best for the home side, but a dislocated finger to Captain Clint Steindl further soured the 98-68 loss. With so many former Wildcats defecting to the jack jumpers before the season... Just chatting away a little bit, just saying, remember when I used to back you up? <laughs> there was always going to be intrigue. Josh Adams found his way from long range and strong teamwork hinted at a well-oiled jack jumpers unit. But focus swiftly swerved to skipper Clint Steindl late in the first quarter. Steindl, he's, he's in all sorts of pain right now. A dislocated finger meant his night was over. Sam McDaniel picked up the slack with an accurate night in front of the hoop. Then momentum started to slip. The Wildcats were poised to break away. Big screen and there we go, Bryce Cotton. Cotton had 18 points and six assists. Adams replied with 17, many from outside the arc. And they needed that. Scott Morrison, not the Prime Minister, the Wildcats coach, urged his MVPs to cross the floor. Crossover, snatch back, oh three-point hit from Cotton. Perth simply had the numbers, sinking 15 of their 28 three-pointer attempts. Mitch Clark open on the arc. A deflating 30-point loss to the injury-depleted visitors. And last night we played the standard of the competition and have been for a long time and uh, another great learning experience for us. You know, we haven't really been in that situation to see that kind of defence and that pressure, so uh, great for our offence to go through it. The Jack Jumpers close out the NBL Blitz against the Cairns Taipans tomorrow night at Elfin. And Hobart's Nathan Earl has signed with Japanese team Ukyo for 2022. He's been with the team for the past two years but hasn't been able to compete overseas yet. Earl has kept in touch by winning several local races last year and also completed an Everesting challenge near Hobart. Good evening everyone. Launceston saw the state's top today of 27 degrees, 25 in Burnie, Devonport 22 and Hobart reaching 19. Across the state, 25 in Wynyard, Lowhead and Friendly Beaches, 21, Flinders Island and Liawini, both 18, 17 on King Island and in Grove and Strawn, and 16 in St Helens. A frontal cloud band can be seen moving over western and southern parts of the state today, with low-level clouds streaming into the east and northeast. Further out, that frontal cloud band is also extending into the Bight, while an extensive cloud band is spiralling around a complex area of low pressure over the east of the continent. Tomorrow, the high to the south of the Bight is extending a ridge over southern Tasmania and north over western and central parts of the mainland. The inland low has moved east over central New South Wales. And we'll see south to southeasterly winds tomorrow, 15 to 25 knots, grading to 20 to 30 knots about the north. And there is a strong wind warning in place for western, northern and northeastern coastal waters from low Rocky Point to Wineglass Bay. In the south tomorrow, Hobart, Huonville and Campania are all 15 degrees and cloudy. Launceston and Georgetown both partly cloudy and 18, partly cloudy and 19 in Devonport. 18 degrees in Burnie tomorrow, Strawn mostly sunny and 19, Wynyard reaching 17. And in the east, 15 and cloudy in St Helens and Swansea and 14 degrees in Port Arthur. And the UV tomorrow is very high nines across the state with sunrise expected close to 5.30am. On Saturday, fine apart from light possible showers about the northwest and northeast. Fine apart from early morning fog on Sunday. And on Monday, a fine day with morning fog and light northwest to northeasterly winds. 34 in Perth tomorrow, possible storms in Canberra, Sydney and Brisbane. Melbourne, 20 degrees and 34 in Darwin. And currently cloudy and 12 in Hobart, Launceston, rain and 15 and partly cloudy and 17 still in Devonport. And that's all in weather tonight, Kim. OK, thank you very much, Chelsea, and that is all your news for this Thursday night. We'll have news breaks throughout the evening. But for now, on behalf of the entire team, good night.